Give me a heart for others. That's what the show's about today. A longing to bring souls to Thee. Is that your prayer? Give me the privilege to tell them of Your love on Calvary's tree. And here's the key, listen. Into the highways and the byways I'll be what you want me to be. Give me a heart for others that I might win them for Thee. We've got a great program for you about the highways and byways. Welcome to Daily Faith. Give Me Heart for Others is my favorite song. It was written by my cousin Robert. And it, to me, it expresses the heart of God. Into the highways and byways, I'll be what you want me to be. There has got to be a flexibility in your heart when you come to reaching your family for Jesus. I was one time in Indiana, and they had, they had hired, it was a big basketball arena, I think, and uh, it was a high platform, and this lady came up to me, and she said, look, my, my husband is, is unsaved, and, and I, w just recently I got saved, and before that we parted all the time, and, but now I'm saved, I pray all the time, I, I hate watching TV, I won't watch TV with him anymore, I go into my bedroom and I speak in tongues under the bedroom door. And I said, lady, if you did that and you were my wife, I'd get mad at you too. I said, that's not, that's not winning someone for Jesus, that's putting them off ever finding Jesus. So about a year passed, and I was back in the same area on a platform, and if, you, if you're a preacher, you'll understand what I'm going to say. All through the service, I knew that over there, there was someone that was shouting louder, clapping higher, um, you know, doing all the... She was into the service, and I'm thinking, oh, she's going to be coming after me after church. Well, she did. After church, she came running up on the platform, literally ran across, nearly knocked me off the platform. And I, she says, do you remember me? I says, no, I don't. She says, a year ago, you told me to love my husband instead of nagging him for the kingdom of God. And she says, instead of getting angry at him all the time, I began to, to just to be happy and, 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 and be part of his life. She says, and he's here with me. And this little fella, she was a big lady. And this little guy came up on the platform and walked across and gave me a hug. And he got saved between the last time I talked to her and the time, because she had tried to scare him into the kingdom and threaten him into the kingdom. And that's not how you win someone to Jesus. The Bible says it is with joy that you draw water out of the wells of salvation. You have, you've got to be attractive in your life to let people see that Jesus is your answer. And I want to tell you something. You have the power in your family to stand there and call them home. One of the great scriptures, the great stories in the Bible that I love, I think is my favorite Bible story of all, is there was a dad that had two boys. You know the story, don't you? The prodigal son. But the story is not so much about the prodigal son as it is about the prodigal father. He had two boys. One, one never put a foot wrong. He was always there. He was faithful. He went to work every day. He was the guy that every family wishes and dreams to have. He ate the same food, lived in the same house, heard the same stories, watched the same experiences. Everything the same. Two boys living exactly the same experience, and one of them decided to leave. So a lot of times when our families go wrong, the devil would come to you and say, it's something you did, it's your fault, your mistake. 
But that's not, that's not necessarily the truth. And the prodigal son left, took half of the farm with him in substance. And the Bible said he wasted his substance on righteous living. He was either drinking or, in fact, one of the Bible translations said he, he, he spent it on prostitutes and parties. And then he said he began to be in want. And while the prodigal's going through all this stuff, there's a dad back home that has a very strange habit. He gets up every morning and goes to the staff and he says, have you fed that calf today? Have you fed that calf? Every morning, have you fed the calf? And one day I can imagine he got up and he said to the young one, the farmhand, boy, have you fed that calf today? And yes, sir, I have. And the old man says, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to walk up. You know where I'll be. I'll be up at the end of the road. I, you, know where I, you know where I'll be. And the young boy says to someone else, why does he leave every day and walk up there? Oh, there's two sons. Not the one that's here, but there's one that left a while ago. And we, we all think he's dead, but he doesn't. And he goes up to the end of the road every day and looks down the road. He spends hours. That's what he does. And the calf, that's the fatted calf. And he's hoping one day that... He'll kill the calf when his boy comes home and have a celebration. But it's not going to happen. It was just another day, another ordinary day. Have you fed the calf? I'll, 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 go up, I'll go up to the end of the road. And he walks up to the end of the road and he's standing watching a dusty, hot day. Memories of childhood days gone past when his boys were in his home. And away in the distance, he sees a figure and his heart skips a beat, and he looks and he, he wonders if, if, what, what, and it disappears again, and then it reappears closer, and it's someone, it's, it's someone that's walking, but it can't be my boy, because my boy was tall and, and strong, and this is a beggar, this is just a vagabond. And the Bible says that while the prodigal was a far way off, the father saw him and ran, it's, it's unseemly, it's undignified for a Jewish man, an elder, to run. But when your boy's coming home, it doesn't matter what people think about you. He's coming home. And he ran, the Bible says, and fell on his neck and kissed him. And he says, my son that was dead is alive. And he took him home and he put on him the best robe and a ring on his finger. And they killed the fatted calf. And they said, let's have a party. All the time that boy was in the pig pen, the dad was doing something. He was calling his son home. His faith was at work every day. No matter how he felt, no matter how much disappointment in his heart and how much the thought was that it'll never happen, every day the father got up and he did something of bringing the prodigal home. And the prodigal was in a pig pen, covered in pig's filth. So hungry, he wanted to fight with a pig to eat a piece of corn's husk, what's left after you've, you've eaten the corn. And louder than the pigs and louder than the starvation and the loneliness, a dad's voice was in him saying, there's always home, son. You can always come home. And I'm here to tell you today, prophetically, that God wants to see your prodigal son come home. It's time for your unsaved loved one to head home. They might be in the worst pig pen doing stuff you'll never imagine, but I'm telling you now, they're not too far away from God's grace. They haven't gone so deep into darkness that God's light can't reach them. And the only thread, the only thread that's holding on to them from where you are is you believing God for household salvation. Is your heart saying, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give them away. I don't care how bad it looks. I'm going to see them saved. And I believe with you in the name of Jesus for household salvation. I want to pray for you. If you have an unsaved loved one, if you have a prodigal son or daughter, granddaughter, grandson, living lives that are beyond our understanding these days, <laughs> If we only knew the darkness 
Christians like I, I, mean, I, I was saved when I was four, baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was six. I don't know what the world looks like. But out there somewhere, your grandson and your granddaughter is. And I want to pray with you. I want to believe God with you for household salvation. And there's several ways you can get in contact with me. You can write me, P.O. Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. You can, that's the old-fashioned way. If you're like me, that's the way you'll do it. Why don't you write me the name of your loved one, whether it's your son or your grandson. I don't care who it is. But I promise you this, I will hold your loved ones in my hands and I will believe God for a breakthrough for household salvation. You can go to philipdcameron.com if you want to do it electronically. Send me the names of your families. Do it today. Do it right now. And as soon as I get them, they'll be brought to me and I will believe God with you for a breakthrough. Listen to me. Here's a word from the Lord to your heart today. Household salvation is coming to your house. Whatever the devil's told you, whatever circumstance looks like, no matter how helpless you feel and hopeless it seems, I want to tell you that God put me in your house today. God put me on your laptop or your mobile device. I don't know what it is, but God sent me to tell you that today is not the day to quit, that an answer is coming from God. If you'll do what the prodigal's father did, get up every morning and say, today might be the day the prodigal's coming home. I've written a very special book, especially for you, about your family's salvation. I know you'll want to get it. Watch this. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Cameron. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. If you do nothing else today for your family, get this book. When I wrote this book many years ago, I first wrote this book about 30 years ago when God gave me the revelation of household salvation. We sold 300,000 copies. It was amazing. And we've, we've literally added a whole bunch to it. It's an up, updated version of the original book. And this full house is when Rahab the harlot Remember the story when the spies came back, our whole house was full. And I'm believing God for your whole house. Listen to me, not a hoof left behind. When we leave, all our family is coming with us. And you get that book anyway, how, and, and, and I know you'll be blessed by it. We are part household salvation. And our biggest part, the, the greatest part that's taken over my heart over the years has been the miracles I've seen in the lives of young men and women that no one else loved. Can you imagine living a, a, a life where every day, now listen to me, every day in an orphanage, a teacher says to you, you're nothing, you're garbage. Nothing plus nothing will always be nothing. Your father doesn't, didn't want you. Your mother didn't want you. And that's the abuse that these kids live through, along with being frozen and, 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 and beaten and hardly enough food to keep them together. And we go and find them. And the theme of my life is if you are born, God has a plan. You are not a mistake. God has a purpose for you. And by putting the seeds of the gospel into a little life and a wee heart to tell them that God is bigger than where they've come from, 
we have seen the most incredible things take place. Orphans lost in their, in their despair, coming out like flowers, turning into sons and daughters. They call me ma, dad and my wife Chrissy mom and, and being part of our family. And then the crazy thing what happens is they then start saying to us, how can we help? What can we do? Everything we do is geared to reach the lost. Because those kids are prodigals with no dad to pray for them. And God's given us the honor and the privilege to reach into their lives. And there's a very, very unique girl that came into our life. She is deaf. And she inspired us to open a deaf home. I want you to meet this miracle. Watch this. Hello, my name is Maria. I was born in Moldova. I became deaf when I was seven months old. I have two brothers, they are older than me, and one sister that is younger. My father is an alcoholic. He used to beat my mother and us for no reason. Because of hard life, my mother left me in an orphanage, in Cahul. She said she will come back to see me, but she never did. She abandoned me. It wasn't easy to me to get used to the orphanage, but after a while, I started to like learning, playing with other children. One day, when we had a school holiday, my mother came to take me home for a few days. I never felt safe because of my father always was drunk. I was full of fear. Getting home, I stayed silently so my father couldn't see me. When I was invited at orphan's hands, I was full of joy. I knew there was family but no sign language and loves deaf people. Here I could finish my cooking and massage courses successfully. Our house is full of deaf girls. We speaking the same language, sign language, and we praise God through science. I am so thankful for God never left me. Thank you. I love you. Isn't that amazing? Maria came to us literally beaten, afraid to be a part of the family that gave her birth. And to watch this girl end up being a missionary, going to youth camps for deaf people and sharing the gospel and preaching the gospel. One of the great challenges we have in our ministry is providing a bed. There's a lot of organizations that talk about awareness. And unfortunately, awareness to most of these organizations is a piece of paper to tell an orphan, be careful, there's traffickers out there, and they'll steal you if you give them a chance. But when you're a girl of 16 being put on the street with no one and no support and nowhere to go, and, a, and a, a guy drives up in a car and says, look, I have an uncle in Italy who has a restaurant and we'll pay your ticket there and, and give you a job and a place to stay. One piece of paper doesn't counterbalance the, the possibility of a bed and a, and a life. And hundreds of thousands of these girls have got in the back of a car. Within 24 hours, they're gone through the Ukraine, with a different passport or whatever. And then when they get to where they're going to be used and sold, they're used and sold 30 to 50 times a day until they die. Girls like Maria, not bad girls, not party girls, girls that just don't know any different. And we are in the greatest challenge of our life right now. You won't believe what God has allowed us to do. We were offered a village of six houses called Vatra Village. Vatra means hearth, like a fireplace, hearth. And we have been believing God and, and, and paying these buildings and at the same time fixing them up. 
And it's amazing to watch what God is allowing to happen. And Melody, you've just come back. This is my daughter, Melody. I keep forgetting to introduce her. I got four children. Chrissy and I got four kids. Melody is the second, the eldest. Philip is my oldest, then Melody, then Andrew we adopted, and Lornan. So I got four kids, and you're married with millions boys. of all boys. Our boys whole family boys. is boys. I've never seen. So my advice is that you just keep trying until we get a girl. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Lord. That was worth coming. <laughs> that was worth coming to do this cooking show for today. You all saw that, heard that, write that down and send it back to me. Melody said she's going to try again. Thank you, Jesus. You've just come back from Moldova. Yeah. Tell them about the miracle of the kids that were once orphans that we rescued, how they now are adults and are actually doing the work. Yeah, we went to visit these houses um, ourselves because um, we've been watching the progress of them being built. And um, Nadia, who if you've been watching some of our previous episodes, um, has been featured in some of the videos we've done. And she was one that took us around and showed us around the buildings. Um, and she went to school to be an interior designer. And she's the one who designed the houses. And some of the young men um, that have grown up through our homes um, did the construction on the house and they put in the doors and they finished the walls and all these kinds of things. So we're coming to a point in this, in this ministry where um, these kids are taking over and they're standing up in leadership. They're designing, you know, this was my job back, back in the day. I had to pick the paint colors and the furniture and what tiles are going to go in the houses that these kids are staying <laughs> in. And I don't have to worry about that anymore because these kids are growing up and filling these positions. So she was taking us around this house and um, explaining the colors that she had chosen for the walls and I wanted this to be a calm, a calm color for these girls so they could just rest in their rooms when they came. And so um, all these kids, from the building process to the finishing, are a part of this. So um, it's pretty incredible. It's, it's an incredible feeling um, to see them fill, this, um, to fill these leadership positions and um, kind of take it on and say, this is, this is my responsibility. I'm going to own this because um, my life was changed because of a house and a bed. Um, and I'm how, going to make this possible for how somebody else. Im how important is that bed to that girl? When you're trying to change somebody's life and you're trying to tell them about um, the love of Jesus or how their life can be turned around, I think of myself as a mother. We've, you know, we go into the villages and help moms um, who, who are barely keeping their families together. And if you're coming to tell me that my, you know, um, that Jesus loves me and Jesus has a plan for my life. But I can't hear what you're saying because I hear my baby crying in the background and I know that she's starving and I haven't been able to feed her. Yeah. Or th this one's crying because I, I can see her lips are turning blue because she's so cold. How, how, can they, how can they process that when the simple needs, needs have not been met? How can you tell a girl that God has a plan for her life when she doesn't know where her, her next meal is going to be? Never mind my future. Um, I, I, I need, you know, sustenance for today. I'm starving now. So before you can um, make that life change, you have to meet the physical needs of people. Um, and that's one of the incredible things about what we do. We are, we are doing both. We're making sure they have a house a roof over their head and clothes to keep them warm and, and food to keep them going. And then when you say, God loves you and he, he has a plan for you, you're not thinking about those those things um, that just keep you alive and going, you can see past today or tomorrow or next week, and you can say, I can do this, I can do it. You know, Nadia would never have dreamed about being an interior designer no. when she was 16 years old. In fact, what happened, let me tell you, when Nadia left the orphanage, in the lag time between us yeah. picking her and her coming to our house, Nadia was, was literally living in a dorm and there was, there was four or five other girls, and they were literally ha having young men in, in the room at night. And Nadia slept with all her clothes on in case she was raped. And she had no food, and, and her cousin, who was in our house, would go and bring her food. She had no hope. And when she came to our house, what happened was that she was able to go into school and study without being afraid of, of being raped at night. And then she had nice clothes. And the, the, her entire vision of herself was changed. So when she heard about Jesus, and we talked to her about God loving her, she understood God's love in a tangible way. She understood, oh, this is what love is about, because she'd never, ever seen it. 
And that's what we do. And that's where we need you to help us. We have opportunities presented to our ministry every day to change lives like Nadia's. And frankly, we, we, we can't do everything that we are offered to do because we don't have the money. Can you imagine the difference could be made if you could say, Philip, I'd like to help. Mel, I would like to be a part of this thing, and I'd like to support one of these kids. I'd like to help open another house. I'd like to be a part of building Vatra. You can do something incredible today. Vatra is $140,000 away from being paid for. 140 people giving $1,000 would make that miracle happen. Can you pray about that? And the great support we need, everyone can do this, is you can change your life for $1 a day. If you can give a dollar a day to help us feed these kids, love these kids, put these kids in school, fix their teeth, and give them a destiny, everything will change. I'd love to be a part of this. Get in contact with us. God bless. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. Daily Faith with Philip Cameron, The Orphan's Hands, reserves the right to direct allocated funds to the greatest need.